Music makes the world go round. It's funny, if you think of it, during the COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions, the music business and the entertainment business as a whole was of the hardest hit. But yet, music plays such a big role in our day-to-day -day lives and the current world that we live in today. Well, let's roll the intro in the meanwhile, but if you haven't already yet, please go and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for instant notifications, and most importantly, as you can see, I like to talk. So leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you think about this specific topic. Music makes the world go round. Hmm. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with point number one. Music unites. Think about a nation, a country, for instance. What would a country be like without a national anthem? At big international sporting events, what would people sing before their team goes out there and represents their country? At the inauguration of a new president, what would the country do and how would they unite as one for a brief moment in time to stand together as a nation and be one? Music, the national anthem. They sing a national anthem. And it is really awesome to be amongst a thousand or 10,000 people that are singing the same thing or the same anthem is really emotional and magical. And it is patriotic and all countries need that. So music is a vehicle that makes countries unite. If I think of my high school, my high school, every Monday morning, we would go to what we called hall, where the whole school would get together and gather in a room or a big hall. And our headmaster would come out. And the first thing that we would do, there was two things that we would do. We would sing the Lord's Prayer and sing the school's anthem. And whenever we would do that, it got the spirits up and it got the headmaster ready to let us know what is in store for the school for that week. And we felt good about it. And we would usually leave hall feeling fired up because we united. And whether or not we like the school anthem or the national anthem, it unites us. Every time you stand in a crowd and you sing it, it unites, music unites. Celebrations, let's think about celebrations for instance. A birthday party, what would a birthday party be without happy birthday? When everybody gathers around the cake and there's candles and you sing happy birthday to the person you love. It is a magical moment. It is far better than just saying happy birthday. And it always ignites happiness, smiles. And that is because it is this ceremonial thing that people do on their birthdays. Now, not everybody sings happy birthday on their birthdays, but a large part of the world does. And it's a great example of how music does help celebrate someone's birthday. A wedding, for instance. If I think back, at my wedding, for instance, I had one of my best friends playing guitar. My beautiful wife walked down the aisle and I'll never forget that song. It was a Beatles song that they played. It was really beautiful. And every time I hear that song today, I think of my wife. And that is because music ignited that emotion in me along with obviously my wife walking down the aisle and the whole event. So music helps us celebrate. It helps us celebrate events, occasions, and special things. If you think of sports, a sport like baseball, every time something happens in the game, there is this little sound, bum -ba -da -bam -ba -bam, or whatever, that goes off to let the audience know that something has happened in the game. And usually these little sound cues will have a meaning attached to them. Like if there's a home run, for instance, there'll be a sound cue, etc., etc. So music in some sports games really plays a big part of the actual game itself. And the environment where the people are watching the sporting event, it becomes so much cooler with all these little sound effects. Cultures and religions. Music is linked to so many cultures and religions. If you think of Christianity, for instance, people go to church on a Sunday morning and the first thing they do as a congregation is they sing, they worship. They sing worship to their God and it is fantastic and it creates a spiritual environment and it warms the church up for the sermon that usually comes to follow. If you think of reggae music, an artist like Bob Marley is a great example because Bob Marley traveled the world as this singer songwriter playing reggae music and telling the word and stories of the Rastafarian religion. I would go as far as to say Bob Marley was one of the biggest vehicles in creating communication and awareness around the Rastafarian religion. In South Africa, we have many tribes and each of our tribes, whether it be a Zulu or a Koza tribe, they have a sound that identifies with that tribe or a rhythm. Now I know in certain parts of Africa, there are various other tribes 
tribes that have very similar things where specifically a percussive rhythm or pattern or sound will relate to the origin of that tribe and it will always remind the people of the tribe of their homeland and their people and their upbringing when they hear that sound or that rhythmical pattern. In modern times, people go out to nightclubs. Now, how weird would a nightclub be without music? A bunch of people just dancing silently, it would be very weird. Have you ever gone to a silent disco? It is an incredibly weird experience when you take your headphones off. You just see people dancing around like a bunch of crazy people really because they're all listening to their own thing, but they're still listening to music. Now imagine if that music wasn't there, there were no headphones. Or if you go to a cigar lounge, a cigar lounge is a very quiet environment, but there is always some kind of soft music playing in the background and if not it tends to be a little bit awkward because of that dead silence the people right next to you can hear everything that you and your partner are trying to say i think it is quite evident that a social gathering or a social environment is always better when accompanied by a little bit of music a soundtrack shall we say music can enhance creativity and memory it turns out that a moderate noise level is actually a sweet spot for creativity and memory and learning. Have you ever heard about those learning CDs? You still get them where you play these lo-fi drone sounds and some headphones while you're reading some script, trying to learn, trying to learn a paper or something like that. That is because that lo-fi drone sound is doing something neurological to your brain and assisting with your memory. It is helping you memorize what you are reading at that moment in time. It helps you isolate, it helps you separate yourself from your environment to focus directly at the task at hand. A lot of visual artists like painters or photographers can't really work without music. I know some painters that when they get into their studios they blast heavy metal and that ignites something within themselves that helps them get to their art at the end of the day. They cannot do creative work without listening to some sort of music that inspires them and makes them feel good about the art they're trying to achieve as the outcome. Some videos, for example, work great without music, like a talking head video like this, for instance, can work without music. But imagine every feature film out of Hollywood came out with no music, no soundtrack, no sound effects. That would be a little bit weird, I'd say. They would feel slightly hollow and the stories wouldn't be as engaging and as emotionally igniting. What would Jurassic Park be like without that massive epic score at the great reveal of the dinosaurs in the plane in the first Jurassic movie. If there was no music, if there was no soundtrack, no sound effects and just people talking, it would be very weird. Just imagine that, no sound, and they reveal these big dinosaurs, it just wouldn't have the same impact. So movies, for instance, are far better with music. However, there are some art films that have no music and not even art films, commercial films that have very little music and specifically sitcoms. I've noticed a couple of sitcoms that don't have a lot of music, but their intent behind that is to create an awkward, awkward environment. No music equals awkward visuals, in my opinion, unless it is a talking head video like this where someone is busy explaining something of interest but even this video of mine has music to it because i feel like it makes the video just that little bit better music assists exercise and sport what would that pilates class be like without music would you get up and do it would you be energized would you feel like you are ready to lose your in that Pilates class if there was no music. No, it would be a bit weird. It would be boring, you wouldn't feel energized and the class would sound uniquely awkward because there would be some woman in front of you shouting at you with no music, no vibe. But if that music's pumping and she's shouting, yo girls, do your thing. It's very cool. It's very exciting and it's uplifting. A spinning class, a spinning class without music would be incredibly uninspiring for me. I've gone to a couple of spinning classes in my life and it is incredibly hard to get through a spinning class. I don't particularly like it. I much prefer running, but with music and especially sort of energetic dance music or dubstep or something like that, or aggressive hip hop, it inspires me to push myself that little bit harder in that spinning class and everybody else around. Otherwise you'd just be hearing the sound of that bicycle. Which can be mesmerizing, but a little bit boring. Music just makes a spinning class a hell of a lot better. Now I know a lot of athletes have trigger songs, a specific song that they play before a race or an event that fires them up, that gets them ready for that, that 
that showdown, shall we say. If you're gonna run the 800 meters, you got this like banging tune that you listen to and it just fires you up for that race and makes you push harder, gets your head ready for the race. If you think of a movie like Rocky Balboa, you know, that soundtrack, dun, 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 it's really awesome. When you hear that, it reminds you of Rocky and specifically running up those stairs, the eye of the tiger, you know, it makes you wanna run up some stairs and, and be victorious at the top of the staircase. So Rocky wouldn't be that athlete, in my opinion, even though it's a story without the soundtrack of the eye of the tiger. Many endurance athletes would resort to music to help them get into flow state when trying to achieve something incredible or remarkable or some next level of endurance like climbing a mountain or running 100 kilometers or whatever crazy thing some endurance athletes do to themselves. They listen to a bit of music in their ears that helps them get into flow state so that they can stop feeling the pain and start actually just thinking about how good it feels to be on that road running or skiing or climbing or hiking or walking. I love getting into flow state and I know for a fact that Mumford & Sons is the band that helps me get there. Music affects mood and emotions. If you're sad, you listen to your favorite artist and within minutes you start feeling a lot better. Sometimes you could be completely pumped up and fired up and then someone plays a sad song and your whole spirit drops. Have you ever been at a house party where everybody's all energized and then a sad song comes on and everybody goes, ah, uh, what is this? Yeah, well, music affects your mood and your emotions. Along with mood and emotions, relaxation. Music is a big part of relaxation. If you go to a spa, they've got that soft spa music that sort of just plays in the background and it makes you feel good about relaxing and kicking your feet up or getting a back massage or a neck massage or whatever it may be that you enjoy doing at massage parlors or spas. But what I do know is that if it weren't for music, those places would also be pretty damn awkward. It would be very weird to have a stranger busy massaging me without at least a little bit of music. And lastly, at least for now in this video, music and fashion. Fashion and music go hand in hand. Let's talk about Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret every year have this big show where they display their new lingerie or whatever it is they're trying to sell. And they have these shows usually accompanied by massive pop stars like Kanye West and Taylor Swift. And the objective is to basically let the audience know that what they are making from Victoria's Secret side of things is pop culture. That lingerie or that outfit or whatever it is that's going down on that runway is assisted by the top of the pile pop artists. Therefore, their outcome is pop culture. So music assists pop culture and fashion in a massive way. How many times have you gone to a show or watched the music video and you see your favorite artist wearing a certain shirt that just looks really cool and you go out and buy something similar because you enjoyed the aesthetic of that garment? Well, I'm victim of that. I've seen many bands that wear clothes, sometimes extravagant clothes, and I'm like, that is really cool. I dig that, I'm gonna go get me some of that. I think that if you backdate in history, musical artists have always influenced fashion. If you think of the Beatles, you know, if you think of Jimi Hendrix, these guys were essentially fashion icons as well as pop stars and musicians or blues stars if we're talking about Jimi Hendrix. Let's talk about Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish makes her hair green and three months later, so many people are walking around with green hair or pink hair or dramatically colored hair with baggy clothes because Billie Eilish made her hair green with baggy clothes. She wore baggy shirts and baggy pants and went against the norms that was expected of female artists on a pop stage. She went against that and she sort of changed fashion and she ignited a whole new thing. And that wouldn't have been the case if she didn't have the vehicle that is music. Well, folks, these are just my thoughts. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. How did music affect your world and your life? I would love to hear what you have to say. And maybe that encourages another one of these Let's Talk videos in the future. And as always, let me know down below what type of videos you would like to see next. And if there's any tutorials you'd dig to get into. I enjoy doing these talking head videos because I like to talk a lot, like I said earlier. 
So let's engage in the comments below. Please go and head on over to the hitlab.co.za and visit the virtual mixing tab. If you want me to mix some of your music, I'd love to. It's a really cool thing. And wherever you are in the world, you can just submit your music directly to me and I can give it a mix for you. That is the virtual mixing tab on my website, the hitlab.co.za, which I will link below. But guys, more importantly, have yourselves a fantastic week and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.